Hi guys, it's Mark from Modern Tech, and today I'm going to give you an overview of my budget build Hackintosh PC. I set myself this budget challenge after watching two Apple MacBook Pros both die from graphics failure. Due to the age of these machines, they're both completely unrepairable by Apple. I was left in a predicament where the only solution to had was to ever sell my soul plus an additional amount of cash for a new MacBook or build a Hackintosh. So I went for the second. So I decided to set myself a challenge. I set myself a budget challenge to build a very, very decent dual boot Windows Hackintosh PC for just £350, which is roughly $425. US For those of you who don't know what a Hackintosh PC is, well, it's pretty much exactly what it sounds like. A Hackintosh computer is your standard everyday computer or laptop just running the macOS software. And for this one, I opted for the latest software, which is macOS Catalina. Although I was just trying to make this a budget build, I still was trying to make it a good PC. I was trying to make it a good Mac system. For the £350 budget that I targeted, the performance level was aiming towards the late 2015 to early 2016 i7 MacBook Pros, which still sell refurbished for just under £1,000, sometimes pushing over that price. Just before we start to talk about some specifications, I just want to put a little disclaimer out there that not all specs, well hardware, can work for a Hackintosh PC. Please, please do your research before doing this. The Hackintosh's own website is a pretty good community and there's lots of forums on there with people putting problems, solutions and a compatibility list with recommended hardware. Also, if you are looking to make an AMD build, which I haven't done, I went for Intel, well, just because I prefer Intel, you can do that, it is possible, so just do some digging around for that. Let's get into the specs. I did end up getting some parts refurbished and some parts new where I seemed fit, but for starters, I got an i7-4790 processor, which came with 16 gig DDR3 HyperX Black RAM, and it also came with a ASRock motherboard, but I didn't use that because it was such a weird shape. To be honest, I should have really looked at the listing a bit better, but it, I jumped on eBay and it was like last minute and it was a good buy. I didn't even look at the motherboard or check out what it was, but the processor and the RAM was what caught my eye. And for the price, I don't regret it. I think I got a pretty decent bargain, but I'm going to just resell the motherboard on eBay anyway. I can get about a tenner for it. So if anything, it's a bit of a win. So for this little combination, the RAM, CPU and the unused motherboard is a total of £133. For the graphics card, I ended up going for an RX 580 8GB Sapphire model, which ended up costing me £128. The original plan was to go for a 570, but the value for money on the 580 on this deal I found seemed pretty worth it to me. As for the power supply, this was a bit of a tricky one because I didn't really want to cut too many corners, but I also wanted to get the most out of my money. I didn't want to go for a used power supply but I also wanted to make sure the one I got had a bronze certificate so that pushed up the price just a little bit but I'd rather play it a bit on the safe side. So I ended up going for a Game Max 550 watts power supply. I did not realise it needed an additional 6 pin connector for my graphics card. I wish I'd known that before I bought it but I didn't and that's just the way it is. So I ended up having to do the unspeakable and buy a 4 pin to Molex adapter. Yes, I know, they're not the best thing in the world but it did the job. The game max power supply ended up costing me £32 with an additional £2 for the Molex adapter. The Molex adapter is the messiest looking thing in the case, but like I said, it gets the job done. Moving on to the motherboard I ended up actually buying <laughs> was another one where I could have cut costs, but I wanted a better colour. They was either paid £25 for a green one or £35 for a black one, and the rest of everything else in the computer was black, so yeah, I went for black. Just a little side note for Hackintosh builds, Gigabyte motherboards are the most compatible motherboards but like I said before, still look it up. The motherboard is a Gigabyte GAH81M DS2V, <laughs> bit of a mouthful. I am actually very happy with this motherboard despite the fact that the maximum capabilities is 16 gig RAM but for the intended purpose of this build, 16 gig RAM is more than enough especially for the specifications that are already in the computer. Now onto the case, as you can already see, yes RGB in all its glory. I initially didn't actually want RGB for this case, I wanted a nice white or silver Mac style case but for the budget I was saying I couldn't actually find any with good airflow and the one I compromised on does actually have good airflow believe it or not. Well compared to something like a £100 NZXT case, yeah okay the airflow might not be the best but for £34 the CIT7 
has blew my mind. You can see for yourself how cool it actually looks for that price. Not only does it look pretty snazzy, it does actually have some pretty cool features to it. The power supply sits at the bottom of the case but it's actually semi partitioned off which is great because it'll reduce the amount of dust that will eventually fall into the power supply so makes life a bit easier when it comes to cleaning. At the top of the case it has a very easy to clean magnetic dust filter which just pulls off and sits right back on again. As well as the obvious RGB lights on the front it also came with an RGB fan at the back of the PC which both can be controlled together through a button on the top which allows you to change colours. Let's talk about some additional cooling. With the graphics card I've chosen, the macOS Catalina will not spin the fans on the graphics cards. I'm not going to go into heavy details about this, but it just won't spin. And I knew that before purchasing the graphics card and it was something I accounted for. Don't worry, the graphics card does work fine. It works perfectly in Windows. It just won't spin in Catalina. So taking this into account, I obviously wanted to make sure that it's not going to overheat. Luckily, I did have an extra fan line around my house, a 90mm quiet fan. So I used that to divert some hot air out of the top of the case. You can buy some 90mm fans for roughly £10 these days. They're quite easy to come by, especially on eBay. For the CPU, I'm never really comfortable using the stock fans. So I bought a Chinese branded heat pipe cooler with lots of aluminium and a pretty large fan to be honest. The cooler cost me £12. At this price it was strictly an eyeball test. No specific research or reviews, just looking and judging at it by the size of that massive fan. To be honest this purchase was probably more just to give me a little bit of peace of mind that I'm not using a stock cooler. But it does look pretty good, I'm not going to lie, even though it shredded my knuckles when inserting it. For main storage, I had to choose an SSD, obviously. It's 2020 and in my opinion, hard drives are just not even a feasible option anymore. If you're looking for a cheap 128 gig SSD for your operating system, you're getting pretty cheap on eBay for about 10 to 15 quid. If you just snatch them up quick or get them on auctions, just keep your eyes open. Again, SSDs were something I already had, so I put a 240 gig SSD as the main Mac OS, and I used a cheap 128 gig Samsung as a Windows booter. You can just split the partitions of one SSD or hard drive to a Mac OS booter or a Windows booter, but to be honest, if you've got an extra SSD or hard drive, I strongly advise going for that. It makes life a lot easier in the long run. As a bit of an optional step due to the location in my house where I plan to have the computer, I had to buy a USB Wi-Fi dongle. I could have got the cheaper ones where it's just a small little USB, but I wanted to get one a little bit larger with two screw-on antennas, and it only cost £7, but it's the best one I've ever used out of any little USB dongle and for £7 I just highly recommend it for anybody who wants to get a USB Wi-Fi adapter anyway. Is it difficult to build a Hackintosh PC? Yes and no. It's not as simple as just buying a computer from the store and shoving Mac OS directly on it. It does require a lot of research. If you're planning on building one I would advise waiting at least a week before buying any new parts and just doing your research for compatibility issues and making sure what you buy it's going to work. Once you've got all the hardware sorted and the system actually in one piece, the operating system is actually quite easy to install. You just have to make sure you follow an updated tutorial. Just make sure it's up to date because there are a lot out there which are not in date and they will throw you off completely. For me, I had an issue where the main installation just kept failing for no reason whatsoever. After scouring and scouring the web, I found one solution. There was one little thread with only two people commenting on it and it worked. All it was is the USB, the pen drive I was using, didn't work. When I say it didn't work, my pen drive was a functioning pen drive, but for some reason it just wasn't being recognised by the Mac OS. Changing the pen drive solved that problem. From my experience building the system, I've come to discover a few pros and cons to share with you all before anyone starts considering building a Hackintosh. First off with the pros, you have complete repairability, upgradable hardware, more affordable, dual or triple boot, visual control referring to case or RGBs and multiple hard disks or solid state drives. As for the cons, you have no Apple Care. I haven't tried it yet but I've heard iMessenger is problematic. Not all hardware is supported and regular software updates are overly complicated and probably best to be avoided. For those of you who have been keeping track of the costs of the hardware, I'm pretty sure you've realised by now that I slipped slightly over budget for some of the additional unnecessary steps such as the colour of the motherboard or changing the CPU cooler. If you want to cut out some of these additional costs, you can easily just buy an i7 HP or Dell Office PC and add a stronger graphics card to the mix, but personally I wanted to have a little bit more fun with the machine and give it a healthy amount of eye candy. 
plus a tad of better performance. My overall experience with this challenge was pretty crazy to be fair, it was filled with ups and downs, moments of frustration. The second that Catalina OS booted, it was like being stabbed with a needle filled with satisfaction, it was just something else. If any of you guys have already built a Hackintosh, just leave your link below, I'd love to see what you came up with. This is a brand new channel so thank you so much for watching, if you like this video please give it a thumbs up, leave a comment, let me know what you think and if there's any other videos you'd like me to do in the future please let me know in the comment because I like doing this and I want to do more and with your guys support it'll be great.